Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and we're gonna do a little uh, update as far as information goes on the what we're kind of calling currently the DeLorean Roadster. Uh, so since we've gotten the car and we shot the video, uh, obviously a lot of people saw the video and it's kind of was just overwhelming because I got the car and had to leave and, and go south and I didn't even really get to dig into the car too much other than the day that we we bought it and cleaned everything out. So since all the dust has settled, I've been kind of checking the car over and I realized that we didn't really walk around the car and uh, show you guys all of some of the neat little details uh, and good shots of the car and give you guys a little background on it. So one big thing that's happened since the first and second videos came out is that we basically did confirm uh, the, the connection between uh, the DeLorean family. So uh, we were contacted by Jack DeLorean, one of the DeLorean brothers, uh, that actually owned this car. So uh, it was owned by him. He sent me an email. We've been emailing back and forth. I'm hoping that he's going to be calling me here soon so we can kind of do a phone call and just talk about some of the history of the car, what he remembers, and give me just some details into it. What The one nice thing he did in the couple emails we, we've already done back and forth is he sent me uh, a photo, a single photo of this car in like 1954 when he got it, where he just started driving it in Detroit. And uh, I was able to kind of find some pieces of the car and, and learn a little information just from that photo. So uh, we're gonna go over the car, show you some details, and hopefully we can get on the phone with Jack and get a little bit more history on the car. All right, so in the, in the old photo that we saw, I saw a couple things that really made the car, uh, hopefully will help identify the car, is the hood and the grill. So I threw on, obviously, in the videos, a stock hood and grill that have old black paint, but we saw in the old photos that it actually had, uh, somewhat had made smooth hood sides and I put some clamshell louvers in, in the hood sides and then also the top, and it had, as I kind of expected, a filled uh, grill shell, which was really common, especially with all the modifications done to it. So we're trying to track down the uh, the original hood for the car. We're hoping that maybe uh, we can track down that hood. We, we heard rumors that maybe when the three window was sold, uh, possibly that hood had had gone with some extra parts with that car. Uh, we're not sure yet, but at least it gives me a direction in case uh, we have to make a hood. I'm hoping not. Um, we, we have a direction of what it looks like. So these two items, they look cool. They fill a space for now, but we'll probably have to change them up a little bit when we go to kind of redo the car. The other cool thing is there was a ton of little parts that when we were digging through the car, I was kind of like, this might be for it, this might not, you know, whatever. And I, we were just throwing a lot of stuff in bins. I saw in the old photo, there was a front plate mount on the front of the car in that one shot that Jack sent us. I went out immediately and dug through my milk crates of parts and I found, this plate holder, which is really cool, fits the car perfectly. There was a hole already in the front spreader bar for this, and it's an old cast um, mount for your hand crank to go through for the engine, and then it holds the front plate. So we know that that's for the car. I just bolted it on for the time being. I don't know what I'm gonna put there, but just kind of filling the pieces in like a puzzle. So. Um, that was, that was really cool. We got the front fenders obviously mounted on. I have one fender brace, but I need a second one. Um, I don't have a headlight bar. In the old photo, it's kind of hard to see if the car had a dropped headlight bar, which is kind of the common thing you would expect with all the other modifications, or just had a stock one. Not sure, we're hoping Jack will know that. Um, the other thing, uh, let me dig them out. You can see I had, I had small headlights in the photos. And digging through my parts piles, I already had. It's a good shoot. thing you keep a backlog of spare parts. I know, I know. So this is one set. I have another set that might be more correct. We're not sure yet, but I have a set of these old uh, guide headlights that have the gumball tops on them, which are really cool. I was saving these for my someday roadster. So I have these that we could it's run someday. Yeah. Well, today is the day. So <laughs> I now have it, but I was already saving them. So. I already have lights, but what we could see is that it had hot rod headlights, you know, what I call hot rod headlights, smaller type headlights, and it didn't have the stock lights. So I have some lights, they'll fill that. Worst case scenario, I'll have to make it, make or get a old dropped headlight bar that'll work out just fine, uh, and that should be good. Um, the next thing is the wheels. And I'm, there was a lot of talk about the wheels. There was people that liked the wheels, they hated the wheels. I kind of was not like, super stoked on the wheels. I, I, I thought for the look of the car since the day I first saw the photos, the wheels looked odd. They didn't match the period of how the car was built. And these are like 53, 54 Chrysler Imperial 
uh, optional wheels and yes the wheels came out when the car was roughly last on the road but we were kind of like I said the, the way the car was built it looks like a late 40s early 50s style build which generally that wouldn't be the wheels on so when Jack sent us the photo you know of course that's why these old photos are so important we're like ah 40 Ford wheels we had some some like dog dish caps so, yeah, I can't tell in the photo if they're baby moons or they're like 40 Ford deluxe caps or something that are kind of smooth and a set of trim rings really great because we found a bunch of 40 Ford wheels in all those stacks of wheels under the car and some of them have old black paint on them so more than likely those are the wheels that were on the car and probably Jack will be able to confirm for us probably those wheels were swapped on by Ron when he had the car it might have been one of the things he did owning a wheel and tire shop he might have got a car in and was able to swap them on that was the vision he was going with so we're going to be pulling these wheels off and putting some big and little tires on to kind of match the photos and a set of 16 inch 40 Ford wheels to match that old photo which I think is a little more correct for the car anyways so that is the wheel and tire situation um, another thing is we have uh, the paint issue here on the uh, on the car kind of been scratching our heads what happened with the paint this door is like super shiny you know for the condition of the car and the rest of the paint is kind of dead so you can see here we we actually polished up and I have that clip I will drop it right, right here, here. It actually doesn't look bad yeah, it's not at all. too bad. This just looks so shiny because it probably was never exposed to anything. But you can see like right next to the door, it's actually a pretty close match as far yeah. as the shininess. I think this will just always be shinier. Be a little shinier because it wasn't exposed, but this thing would probably most of the paint would probably shine up on old 3M rubbing compound. crazy it looks like gray primer until you clean all the junk off of there yeah, yeah. that would come back yeah just need a lot of time carefully <laughs> with a buff wheel uh, I don't think you could buff this thing you have to do it all by hand you'd have to do it by hand I think it's too too rough so we, we one day just for fun when we had a few minutes tried to rub out the paint a little bit just with like a step one three M polish and a rag we didn't go crazy but it polished up a little bit but this door is just like so much shinier so I'm trying to figure it out well after looking at it the door pins are half knocked down or knocked out I have a feeling that these doors or at least this door was taken off the car and maybe stored somewhere out of the elements for a long time and this is probably what the paint looked like originally on the car and the other paints kind of like dead so to speak or needs to be buffed but I don't know if we'll ever be able to get this shininess out of the paint that's around it so we have to kind of decide what we're doing if we you know if we make everything as shiny as the door or if we kind of you know reshoot the door we know the passenger door has to be reshot because all the paint fell off from it being on that side of the building or maybe both these doors were off and the other door was sitting on top of it and rain was getting on it and that's what knocked the paint we don't really know but so it obviously has the full row of gauges in it it has um you know just all the wings gauges and then it actually has an 8,000 rpm tack which is amazing 140 uh, mile per hour uh, speedometer one thing that's kind of interesting to me is even though it has the full row of gauges the single pressure, I believe it's fuel pressure probably, that single pressure gauge is a little different and I don't think it's a store warner. Um, it's kind of odd that it doesn't have that. Now, I'm having a personal tur tur turmoil because it's giving me OCD shakes because it shouldn't be the matching gauge. I have the correct matching gauge in my stash, but the car didn't have it. So it's kind of one of those things with these historic cars. It's like, do you do something that's makes it just all like flow better or do you just leave it and it, it is what it is i don't know yet but we'll kind of make that decision later on uh, a lot of the gauges have the bulbs or the uh, capillary tubes still on them so you can see uh, one of them's tied up behind and is here so that's really good to see this has a um i think it's a truck like 37 or maybe it's big truck 
uh, steering drop on it, which is kind of cool. So it meant that probably they had the seat lowered down so that they sat lower, obviously for the chopped windshield. And it's got the little starter button right drilled into the steering drop. So that's super cool. I love that, um, that that has in there. It obviously has the, um, the 40 Ford steering column tube, which you can see there's a column shift piece here and then the 44 deluxe steering wheel on it we found that extra wheel that came with the car i'm going to keep that extra wheel just in case it's better on it i'm not sure yet but and the on. extra gauges too yeah extra gauges are not for sale i got a bunch of people asking me like oh yeah are you selling the gauges no what's they're... nice is the chrome on the extra gauges is like yeah super nice so if we would ever you decide to restore the car the the spare gauges are like Ready to go, yeah. drop in, don't need any work. Yeah, the, the spare gauges, obviously, the, the little tackle box gave its life with all the rain going on it, but the gauges inside were really nice. So I'm gonna hold on to those. We may, depending on the direction of the car that I go, uh, we have the option to swap out for better ones. Even if we kind of keep the car as a like, you know, like a survivor type car, so to speak, and just do a, what I call a sympathetic restoration. Like this gauge here, that the oil pressure that's, you know, a little crusty, we could swap it out for a better one. It won't really look that bad but you know we have to make those decisions now one thing we didn't show in the video that i was kind of bummed at, i don't know if we've lost the footage or just didn't make the cut but what we found in the car and was a huge oh my god moment was we found on the front of the car this piece right here so i want to we'll roll it out on the floor over here and show you guys this door shut so nice <laughs> so we found this on the front of the car have to be delicate here. So this is what another thing that makes me think that this car was built back in the, you know, earlier than the, you know, 54 or something like that, because this is an original, the original, um, Tawana cover for the car. Incredible stuff. This is dream stuff to find. Um, so this is the original on a cover that would have went on the car. You would have taken the windshield frame and, and stanchions off. You would have taken the top off and you would have put this on and then you can unbutton this for the driver. And it actually has, so I was kind of wondering if this was something that Ron had found and just put with the car because there was a lot of extra parts he gathered over the years they just threw in the car. But what kind of told us it's definitely for this car is there's, you see those snaps here, they're actually upside down at the front of the car here. If you go to under the windshield frame, on the, or I'm sorry, under the dash rail on the car, way under here, there's snaps all along the underside of the dash rail where that would have sat, mm -hmm. and then the flap laid over top. So uh, between that and then, you know, the snaps that are under the top in the back, we pretty much know that that's the original Tawna cover for the car, which is just like super cool. And it's actually in decent shape. So whether we leave that one on and put it on for display or we have it redone when we do a top and stuff, we have that piece, it's gonna stay with the car and whether it gets used or not, it'll be kept with the car and it's really, really important to have that stuff. So obviously it doesn't have the engine in it. The rear and torque tube are still in the car but the, the engine and trans aren't in it. That's one of my biggest things. Um, there are multiple engine mounts in it. There's like the original cross member uh, V8 mounts then behind that, there is two sets of just like plates that are welded in uh, with holes drilled in them that would use the Ford biscuit mount. So we don't know, like, did it have a flathead always or was an overhead swapped into it? We're not really sure. We do know that um, Jack's brother, George, uh, like we mentioned in the video, was a well-known um, drag racer and engine builder. So who knows what they were doing once they were running the car around. They might've been swapping in uh, a Hemi or a, or a Cadillac or something, who knows? We don't know any of that yet. That's kind of the information we're trying to get from Jack. But uh, those couple of engine mounts kind of make me curious as what they had in it. Maybe there was a LaSalle with something else. We don't, we don't really know yet, but that's why I'm saving a lot of these parts till we get some more answers for it. So that is uh, kind of the interior of the car. All right, so we're gonna show you that the convertible top is kind of one of the things I wanna show when we're moving to the back of the car here. You can see it has a little tiny window that was put in it. I'm surprised the chrome hold the, up so yeah, well. Yeah, the chrome is actually pretty decent in it, so, uh, and the glass is good. So we can save this piece here definitely when we get the top redone. That's super important. Um, 
our, uh, our buddy Jim uh, is a master upholstery guy, and I'm trying to get him over to check the car. He's also a 32 nut. And uh, I'm trying to get him over to check out the car before we pull the top off or do anything, because he can kind of give me uh, an idea of what we need to do to save off of the top or you know what someone would need or him. I'm hoping I can twist his arm to, to do some upholstery work eventually on the car. Um, but I know a lot of this stuff just from being around these cars for a while, like this type of stuff kind of gives a roadmap for the uh, for an upholstery guy to know how to stitch the top or how it was put together. So it's really good to see the rear window. I've been saving a bunch of rear windows for my someday Roadster that are just like this. So I could sell all those off and keep this one because mine luckily has a good one. Um, but underneath here, I don't know if you can see, there's actually the snaps for the tonneau cover. So there you can see, I'm pulling them, but there's the snaps that were for the tonneau cover. So we can unsnap that and you can change the tonneau cover over. So that's cool. Again, we were, that's why we were like, aha, that's for that. So the car was doing some kind of serious racing, whether it was drag racing or dry lakes to have a tonneau cover like that. It's generally not something you would just, an average guy would have cruising around with his arm around his gal. <laughs> so she didn't um, even fit. Yeah. So the the uh, the back end of the car is probably the most interesting thing. Uh, the original ad for the car had this iconic shot that was the three window on top of the lift. This car in the back. The first thing you see is the 39 taillights, the filled in rear deck lid area, in, or I'm sorry, rear panel area in here, and then this amazing uh, roll pan or, or gas tank cover, however you want to call it. Um, this is just phenomenal. I mean, it, it, this isn't something that you see on a lot of these cars. It was something that was, you know, done by a craftsman. The way the edges are all rolled in here, like it's not like it's something that like it was, you know, super crudely done. Somebody rolled the edges in, welded the corners, smoothed it all in, made it real nice, cut out nicely around the gas tank. So like. This is nice work. I mean, this is something that somebody would make nowadays and be proud of. So to see that on the car is really odd. So something that I've been trying to research is, and it was mentioned actually in some of the comments, either on the ham or uh, on Facebook or somewhere in one of the you know, different places where people are discussing this car. Um, that rear pan is very, very, very similar to the Dawn Spencer Roadster in the early form of that car. Um, this is. It, almost exactly. I've been looking at old photos and it's super close match. Now we know that the Spencer Roadster um, was taken apart, I think in like the 50 or 51, something like that, when he was getting it ready for um, that like Trans American race or whatever. And he sold off or got rid of a lot of the parts and changed the car around. And the now version of the car is done to like the later style of that car, like when it was being redone. So this this roll pan and the full fender look, the, the gauges across the dash are really, really similar. So it makes me wonder if either the person that built this car originally, were they, you know, in, were they inspired by his car? Maybe they saw it in a magazine or something and they built the car. We don't really know. Again, Jack's hopefully going to give us some of that information when he calls us because then we're going to know, like, were, did they see an old hot rod magazine and saw his car and they built it or, you know, how, was it done already? We don't know yet. But 39 taillights, kind of a staple on old hot rods. Uh, you see it all the time. I know people think it's overdone, but they just look so right. It's got these cool little bumper, um, little bumper bars or, or Nerf bars that are on here that were made back in the day. Uh, something that's really cool on this and, and, and we found a couple of hand pumps, which I'll show you in a minute here, in the car for old racing fuel pumps. And what I think is interesting is this thing has a welded filler neck with a thread on cap. It's got a bolt on the top here. This is like a brass thread on cap. And when you take this cap off, it's got these little plates in it that basically, when you tighten that, that bolt down, it pushes these down in and blocks off the vent hole so you can pressurize the gas tank. So that, that again gives me information that the car was, you know, was probably had, you know, pretty much definitely had a hand fuel pump in it for racing because there's no reason you would put that on there otherwise you would just leave the stock cap on there. So that's pretty cool. It'll, it'll be neat to see what's going on underneath of this when we, when, we, uh, when we take this apart. I noticed that the spare gas tank that we found up in the rafters actually has the same thing, a welded on neck for a thread on cap. So maybe that was one that was in it before. We don't really know, but it's kind of odd that they're both in there. So um, that's 
pretty cool, but the back end of this car is just like, it's just so killer. I'm so psyched on it. That's pretty much what sold me on the car with the chop top and obviously being a 32. So, um, like I mentioned, this is all filled and leaded in here. There's no, there's no uh, trunk latch on the car. We found some pieces, but I'm not sure uh, what was going on there. It's all filled with this freaking cotton stuff that's in here, which is pretty crazy. I'm glad that that didn't rot out worse in the deck lid, but we were just before we shot this video actually noticing this thing has green paint under the deck lid. So there's a good chance this car was green in its original form before it was repainted. Shame it was a Washington blue, you'd be in love. I know, well there is some blue here. I'm not lying. Is there? Yeah, there's actually oh, yeah. some blue right there. Oh, you know what? That might be blue, Washington blue. Oh no. Oh man, that's killer. But uh, yeah, so anyways, the, I put together this little bin of stuff that I'm pretty sure is things that we need to keep with the car. There was tons of like 40 taillights and stuff we found, but obviously they're, they're not for the car. But uh, a couple of things we found, like I found this little mirror that like would go on the door pin, which is kind of cool. So uh, I've never seen one like this and it's definitely very old. So I'm wondering if this, this might've been for the car. I don't wanna sell this stuff. I'm gonna be selling some of the extra parts. So I wanted to make sure the stuff that I have a hunch on, we don't sell. Um, we found two hand pumps in the car. We found this really, really interesting one that has this like Bakelite knob, which is out of this world. Super cool, the, end, the end's all smooth and rounded. Just uh, really, really neat. It's got a piece of upholstery still on it. Oh, yeah which is kind of cool. So this was obviously in something. Um, we found another fuel pump, which is a more common like bell style pump that I've had a bunch of these over the years. Uh, that could be a spare one. It could be the one for the car. We don't really know. Uh, I found this cool, obviously we weren't gonna, this probably is no good anymore, but the uh, old chrome voltage regulator. So we can at least, at the very least, least use the cover if we put another one on and that'll kind of retain the look. We'll be able to match up the holes in the firewall to, to kind of see if that's um, correct for the car. And uh, just a bunch of hardware toolkit, stuff like that. So as I'm going through the car, I've been trying to save some of those parts just so when we're putting the car back together, you don't want to throw something away and be like, oh man, that's what that was for, like that license plate mount, just so. I probably would have sold not realizing it's for the car. So uh, there's our single front fender brace. I'm looking for a second one. If anybody has one that wants to horse trade, I'd love to get another one for the car so we can you know, have that for the front of the car. We found these side curtains for the car. So we showed them in the video a couple times now. Really cool. They got the flap in the window to you know stick your arm out or to stick your hand in to unlatch the door. Um, which is really neat. So those are good to have when we get the upholstery done. I haven't even cleaned the interior of this car out. For the you did out. a pretty good job cleaning it with yourself. Yeah, yeah. Of it. I was sneezing like crazy. That was really bad. Lost a couple years in that, my life in that. Um, so you can see they have access for something. Yeah, well right here there's a really, I'll turn the light here, some crude, uh, this does not look like the quality of work that was done to the car, you know, when it was originally yeah. built. That looks like what I expect to see in an old hot rod, but not common of this car. Um, I'm not sure what was going on there. We'll have to see when we take the car apart. We, you know, we can probably fix, probably we can fix that. Um, then it's obviously got the roll bar in it, which is really, really, really cool. Um, everything was sprayed with this like, I don't want to call it undercoating because I don't even know if they had undercoating then, but this stuff was sprayed all in the inside of here. It's probably why it sounds so solid. Oh, it's like, oh, there's like a padding under it. Yeah, there's like a door card. I think they might have sprayed right over the like interior paneling here. Because look how that like moves. It's super yeah. soft. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of scary. It's not <laughs> asbestos at all. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on there, but that that's we're finding stuff as we go. But um, yeah, you can see the roll bar that's in here, which is really neat. Um, we'll obviously keep that um, uh, on the car and when we redo everything. And uh, yeah, the trunk floor is pretty iffy. The trunk floor is pretty solid back here, though. Back here, but yeah, where all the LaSalle's lived and a lot of water sat, 
is uh, pretty bad. Yeah. Pretty bad. So, like I said, more than likely we're gonna have to do sub rails and a floor in this thing. Uh, I will try and retain as much as I can of the original metal, but you know, sometimes there's just no way around it. So, now let's hope. Uh, I'm hoping Jackson will call us here in a little while so we can talk about the car. Uh, once he calls us, I have a ton of questions for him, and also want to hear some of the crazy stories. He's already told us stories about like him drag racing the car. Uh, back in the day and uh, beating all kinds of people on Woodward Ave and and uh, just how how quick the car was back then so I'm really really excited to hear more from him on the phone so uh, we'll, we'll get on the phone with him get some answers and then uh, hopefully we'll be uh, be moving along have a better direction on what we're going to do with the car. So you told me briefly in an email you so you you found the car to use like a, a consignment shop is that what you said in LA? <laughs> no I was uh I was working here to save money to buy a hot rod, you know. Okay. And I, uh, I was 16 years old when I bought this thing. So. Wow. <laughs> so, well, my cousin, I have a cousin who, uh, aunt and uncle at the time, uh, lived out in L.A. And I went out and stayed with them. And my cousin knew this guy who had a, uh, you know, a car lot where okay. he sold con consignment cars. Okay. And uh, that's where the uh, 32 was. And I liked it. It was exactly what I was looking for. And so I made a deal. And wow. as I indicated, it was uh, <laughs> not really very drivable because <laughs> it had no, you couldn't put a fan on the thing. It was a heated manifold. It was high speed run you know, for the soft flats. Right. And they, uh, even there, there was not even a fuel pump. You had to pump it by hand. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it was, yeah, in your video, that's what the guy was pumping. That was the actual fuel pump. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah I, I knew. You know, I'm pretty heavy into this stuff, so I knew that stuff right when I saw it. Was was it the one? Was, was it the one with the um with the brown knob? Is that the one that was? No, it had a white knob, as I recall. I'm going from memory now. It's been. 50 years ago. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Was, I think it was w white, you know. Well, there was two. Yeah. We, we found two of them in the car. One is just like an aluminum knob, and then the other one that was in the car had kind of like a lightish brown, like a Bakelite type material. I thought it was white, but I could be wrong. I'm, okay. I, I'm pretty sure it was white. That's okay. Well, hey, white, uh, I, I, I won't hold it. Anyway. Uh, Okay, I won't hold you to it. It's just some of that stuff. That's why I want to ask you questions because I found multiples of things. So we're trying to keep you know the original parts with it. Um, so you said you tried to drive it home. Yeah, I was going to drive it home, and uh, well, I couldn't. You know, the thing would heat up. You couldn't go very long. You know, you couldn't go over like forty or maybe forty-five, and the thing would start overheating because there was no fan. Right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so it's good, uh, especially you go through the desert. I know I went to school in California. I drove out in a Corvette, mm. and I couldn't go over 60. I'd have to pop the hood. You know, the Corvette had a rear opening hood. Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't go over, like, 60, or it was overheat. And that's with a fan. That's, a, you know, a full-blown car. So it's... It's a little warm out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll say. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so you you were saying um, when you so then you 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 bought another car to try and tow this thing home. Yeah, I bought a. I think it was a thirty five coupe to tow the uh, Roadster home. Mm -hmm. Well, that, there's not much power in a you know thirty five, mm -hmm. and I could I couldn't really tow it. it any incline at all, it wouldn't make it. <laughs> so I sold the thirty five, and I had. Uh, my brother John loaned me some money to hire a law Holloway, and they put it on one of those Harold Holloway trucks. Okay. And brought it back. And so, did you? Yeah. So, ha um, so that had a flathead in it, right? That's what it had when you bought it. Had a flathead the Ford. What? It had a flathead Ford engine in it when you bought it. Like. Uh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did yeah. And it, and you said it had like a did it have like some kind of high rise intake? You said it was water cooled or water heated intake. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah, it had the regular water pump on it. No, no, I meant the... Uh, it had, uh, but it was... Uh, I, I, I've never seen an NK. We had Edibrox heads we put on. But I mean, I've never seen an intake manifold without the fan thing. It's okay. It's kind of strange. Yeah, I, I, we... I, we've no support. Yeah, we've seen... I've seen those before where they were, you know, they're, they're strictly race only. 
Um, That's what this was. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember how many carburetors it had on it? Like two or just four? Just one. Oh, it just, just had one. Oh, wow. That's that's crazy. Yeah. Um, well, when I put the other engine in, I think George had three. Okay. But it was, uh, when I bought it, I think it only had one. Huh. Now, did it, um, did the engine that George built for you, was that a flathead as well? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so. I think when I sold it to Ron, I think we pulled the motor out. I think I sold it to him without a motor. Okay. Well, the George, George had a really hot engine, and I, I never lost a race with that car. <laughs> Except one, one time, I almost lost, man, I was Eight Mile Road, and I was racing this guy, and I forgot to pump up the gas. <laughs> and I started sputtering, and I had to pump real quick, but I ended up winning. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> that's yeah. that's great. It was pretty funny. Couple of the it had a it had a Carson top. You know what a Carson top is? Man? Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay, it had a Carson, very expensive top, and then with the uh, side windows with the little you know flap opening, yep. things like you noted. But the uh, Carson top was great, but you could not, it didn't fold. You know, yep. it wasn't a convertible. Yeah. And uh, if you're going to restore it, uh, you'll probably will put a new windshield frame in, and mm. you'll probably want to put a, you know, obviously your top shot. Yeah. But I, if it were my preference, if I were doing it, I'd make the top, uh, the convertible top retractable so you could fold it down, you know. Yep, yep. I would stick a roll bar in there behind the seats, you know. Did you so? Did you put the roll bar in there, or was that there? No, no, I wanted to. I never did. Well, there, there I, only had, I was only sixteen years old, but <laughs> okay, it wasn't exactly what you call a sophisticated guy. <laughs> well, but, uh, what's, I wanted to put a roll bar in and get things going, and uh, hmm. I got. I ended up going in the army, so I didn't have a you know a lot of time to screw around with it. Right. So. Um, so the, the the reason I asked about the engine is there there's multiple engine mounts in the frame. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. George had to put some special mounts in for his engine to go in. I remember that. Yeah. Huh. But it was still a flathead. They were all flatheads. Wow. Okay. It so never never had anything but a flathead when we had it. So you said the top. Um, did do you remember the Tauna cover that was there that you put on for racing? Like they would, they would take the windshield no, and. No, I never had one. Uh, if there was one, no, I never used it. Never okay. had it. Okay. Well, we found yeah, one. We I'm found sure. we found one with the car that actually matches. Like all the snaps match. Like it might have. Really? Came, Are you, you? Is that right? Yeah, and I. It must have came that's with. Strange. I, I'm wondering that's, if. Now that's strange because I never had a tunnel cover, hmm. and to my knowledge, there were no. Uh, wait a minute. I'm saying there was no snaps. There may have been snaps. Yeah, there could have been snaps for the back of the, uh, you know, the, the top, the Carson top. Yeah, it was. It was kind of. Uh, uh, I'll have I to. Don't, I don't think I ever saw a tunnel cover. Yeah, and, and unless so cars that run as soft flats typically do have a tunnel. Yeah, it's it's definitely for this car because the snaps line up and it's and it's the same material as the roof material. That's, and that's it, surprising because uh, I don't remember that, and I. Uh, I don't remember that at all. Hmm, maybe but if the snaps are there, maybe it was, I don't know. I may, don't really. We we thought that's puzzling. Well, we thought maybe when you bought the car, it was in the trunk or something, and you just you know you just something you never no. took took out or something. I don't know. Um, that's possible, but I doubt it because okay. we went over that car pretty thoroughly. Okay. But it's possible. Okay. It's possible if, if it all matches the snaps and. It almost must be. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. The front, there was, it had to have snaps in the front. And there was no snaps on the, well, the instrument panel, was there? Um, well, I'm trying to feel now. Yes, there is. There's snaps under the dash rail, um, just under the windshield. There's, uh, I'm feeling it as we're talking. There's one, two, there's three or four snaps where it would have snapped, like, under, underneath. Maybe so. Maybe. So. maybe. But that really throws me because I don't remember that. <laughs> well, it's yeah, been. I, think I realized it was man. It was sixty, seventy years yeah. ago. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I. I remember so much. You know? Yeah, oh, I'm. <laughs> I'm impressed with how much you told me already, even in your emails on the car. <laughs> so where? You'd be interested. I'm glad to hear you. You know, you're excited about it. Oh. Have fun with it. Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, no. So where was the fuel pump? The little hand pump. Where was that mounted in the car? To the left. To the left of the steering column. Okay. There was a little flip switch. You flipped the switch, and then you could pump. 
is it opened up the you know the valve. Yep, yep. And you'd pump it up, and you flip the switch again. Then it would, the engine could draw gas. Okay. They just built, and then they, as I mentioned in my email, the uh, gas cap is pressurized. Yep. It's screwed on. Most mm. gas caps, well, I've never seen another one with a screw on. The yeah, gas cap was fitted so it would screw on. And in the middle of the gas cap, there was a screw. You tighten up the gas cap, then you turn the screw, which would push a plate inside the gas cap to seal it so yep. you wouldn't lose any air. Because that's your fuel pump. <laughs> right, right. You, that, you, lose, you lose air pressure in there, you got no fuel pump. Yep, I, I actually, I, that's funny because just tonight I took that gas cap off and those pieces kind of like fell out when I took the cap off and I was inspecting them like trying to figure it out and I was like, oh, this is what he was talking about with the gas cap. So it's all, yeah, it's all still there. It's, that's, that's really yeah. neat. Um, that's what it was, yeah. Is the wrench shield frame pretty rotted out, or is it uh, still usable? It's not rotted out. It's just the chrome is 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 gone, but it's not rotten. There it's are some guys that making them, I think. I think I saw on the internet. Some guys are producing them, and I don't know if, if, you, know, if you need one. I don't know if you need one or not. Yeah, well, for, for right now, yeah, I, I may eventually, uh, depending on what direction we go with the car. Um yeah. So that's now the so the car currently so what year did you sell it to Ron? Oh, roughly. Probably, I'm just guessing. Probably, I took it to high school in '54. Fifty. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I graduated from high school in '54. Okay. '54. Uh, so I had it in January. I bought it in. I think in uh, summer of 54, I believe. Okay. So, uh, what was your question again? <laughs> uh, I was I was curious. You get to say you'll find this all the time. I know, I know. <laughs> I was wondering how long you owned it and when you sold it to oh, Ron. I, I didn't have it that long. Um, probably a year or two, because I went in the Army when I was... 17 or 18, I think I was 18. And you had sold it already so, at that point? Oh yeah, oh yeah, Okay. way before then, yeah. Oh, okay, so all those stories you were telling me were within the year, the first year of you owning it. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, my brother George pulled the engine out that we had, and I think he may have junked it, I don't know, but he had a phenomenal, he was a, a mechanical genius, mm -hmm. but he uh, put his engine in there, that thing was just un incredible. Oh man, and that and that one had yeah, three yeah. three carburetors on it. Yeah, as I recall, yeah, it had a brook intake and heads. Okay. Oh, that's very cool. Um, so the the wheels on it, I don't know if you saw in the video, but the wheels are wire wheels. Were they changed by no, some? They're not my wheel. No, yeah, they, the picture I sent you, Matt, so solid steel wheels. Yep. Those are the wheels I had. Okay. I. Uh, I didn't put, no, I wouldn't change the wheels. Okay, and did you, uh, so those those were the wheels that were on it when you bought it in, in LA? The one in the picture, yeah. Yes, okay, great, because that, that's what I wanted to put on the car, and I was hoping you would say that, so I'm glad to hear that, because that, I, I don't. Well, that would, I liked it better with the solid, I don't know why, I just like it, you know, it's more. Yeah. more realistic, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if Ron had put those wheels on at some point. Um, well, he must have because you know you bought it from him. He had to make the change because I sure did. Right, right. So how did how did you know Ron? Were you guys in the same car club or something? No, uh, I I was I think Matt. I, I don't remember exactly, but I think it maybe I was going into the army. Okay. And I thought I should sell it. Okay. And uh, uh, some guy Willie Lafreniere wanted to treat me as a motorcycle, and he'd ride up and down the street in front of the house, and I thought, I'm not, I may be crazy, but I'm not that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, no, I'll pass on that. And then, uh, uh, I don't know how Ron Simak got a, somebody, I, I don't know who got a hold of him, and we made a deal. I think I sold it to him for four and a quarter, maybe 500. <laughs> <laughs> I think I paid four and a quarter. Maybe I sold it to him for five and a quarter. Oh man! And, uh, <laughs> it went up in value just yeah. a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and there was no motor. There was no engine in it. Oh my gosh! Oh my! I recall, George pulled his engine back out, and we 
parked it in front, and then uh, C-Max bought it that way without an engine. Now, were you? Did you ever take this Roadster into like a, a show? Like you know, there was the Detroit Autorama. Did you ever show it in no. like a show or anything? No. No, oh. all I did was street race. <laughs> <laughs> I liked that. That was my fun. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> now, we found a car club plaque with it. Were you in the Downriver Modified Club? No. Okay. Never heard of it. Okay, so that was Downriver Modified was one of the clubs that started the Detroit Autorama. And we found a car, we found an aluminum hot rod club plaque under the car, and we didn't know. It might have been Ron was in the club. We don't know. Um, but well, we. What are aluminum? Oh, a plaque. Yeah, like a you know, like the no, hot rod club plaques. No, you know that you would put under. Yeah, no, it had to come from Ron. I didn't have any yeah. of that. Okay, well that all that stuff helps me with what to put back on the car. So that's why I wanted to you know wanted to know that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that so the hood. The hood and the grill, um, when Ron sold his 32 three window, we think the guy that bought the three window might have gotten that accidentally with the car. So I'm trying to get a hold of him because uh, the photo you sent me had those clamshell louvers on the hood. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm really kind of sad that that got away. Uh, yeah, I, I can't imagine it having any value for anybody, but somebody with a 32. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. And louvers on the top and louvers on the side. It was beautiful. Yeah, so we're... Louvers are very well done, Matt. Really? They're extremely done, well done. Wow. Well, yeah, that's... that's. I'm trying to work on tracking that hood down because that really... Uh, I think that's part of the cars. Yeah, that's, that's important, yeah. yeah very much. And the, uh, you know, like most 32 hot rides, they fill in the uh, radiator thing and... You know, yep. Yeah. I shell. Yes, yeah. I saw that as yeah, well. The fenders were fine. It was one little problem with the fender, very minor, Matt. Okay. And this is when I bought it. The guy who took it on consignment drove it and had a little accident. Not nothing. In other words, just the front of one of the fenders that fits right on the frame rail, you know, in front. Yep. It just kind of wrinkled it a little bit. It was not. You wouldn't even hardly see it unless you're looking for it. Well, uh, now, now that the, was the only thing. Um, well, now that you now that you tell me that, um, when we were fitting the fenders up, uh, the one fender yeah. the one fender doesn't fit very well, and that you could the see the front, the driver's side. Um, no, actually, it's the right front fender, and it looks like it's crinkled. Yeah, it might, yeah, it might have been the right. Yeah, I'm gonna think of it. I try was the right fender. Yeah, it's a little wrinkled just at the front. Yep, yep, yeah, that's. That's it. We and we were kind of. It's, it's, it's very simple to fix it. It's no big deal. Yeah, it was just funny because the left fender went on like a dream. You know, it bolted right up yeah. and it was perfect. And then the right fender was fighting us, so we couldn't get the bolt holes to line up. And I'm like, something's funny here. And now that you say that, yeah. I can see, I can see where it's wrinkled a little, and somebody might have tried to just kind of hammer, hammer and dolly it real lightly or something to fix it, but. Um, it yeah. might be, yeah, they might have screwed it up worse. Yeah. <laughs> but a good body man can hammer it up. There was some rust in the left side uh, front quarter panel. Is that, how is that? Uh, yes, that's still there. It's got some rot in the bottom, you know, left front uh, cow panel has a little bit of rust. Yeah, I, would, I was going to have it metal finished. I don't like Bondo. Yeah, yeah. Lead. But I'd have it metal finished. Okay. Now the so it already had that rust when you sold it. It just it wasn't real bad. Okay. But it was it was yeah it was rusty there. As I recall, that's the only rust in the car that there was that I can remember, Matt. Okay. Um, do you remember what color the the seats or the interior was? <clears throat> It was somebody's little blanket, I think. Oh, okay. So, I'm serious. That's, that's what it was. It was a red one, I think, kind of a maroon blanket that covered the seat. Okay. That's really classy. <laughs> I was going to, of course, eventually have the whole thing reupholstered, you know, but that's what it, that's all it was there. Okay. Well, the blank, the blanket is gone and, and the original seat fabric is, is kind of there and it's, it looks like it's black, but I just wanted to check with you to see. Um, but uh, that's, that's fine. Yeah, that, I don't remember anything beyond the blanket, so I... And do you, uh, so the last question is, do you, you said about the transmission, it had like a Zephyr gears or something, or? 
yeah, as I recall, it was a Zephyr trance, very smooth. Shifting was just out of this world. I've never shifted any transmission as smooth as that one. It was an unbelievably smooth. Wow, and that and that was. I, I think George, my brother George, told me it was. A, I think a Zephyr. Okay. Yeah, that's common. Which is Ford. You know, it's a Ford. Yep. Yeah, that's a common thing guys would do. Uh, like I said, that's why I wanted to ask you these questions because I have a Zephyr transmission on the shelf, and oh, I, you do. Yeah, I saved these parts. Is, is a trans in the car now, or is it? Out? No, no, there's no trans in it, and we found uh, Ron was collecting uh, LaSalle transmissions, and we found a we found a pile of La, 37 LaSalle transmissions in the trunk, and um, I, yeah, I saw that in the video. Yeah, so I was wondering if the car had a LaSalle, but you, you're saying it had a Zephyr transmission. In. Pretty sure it was Zephyr. I, I don't think it was LaSalle. Okay. Well, that's... Who, made the, who made the LaSalle? Was that a Ford? No, that's Cadillac, Cadillac and Cadillac and LaSalle were oh, the same yeah, company. Oh, yeah, I remember, yeah. Yes. Now, I'm, I'm almost certain it was uh, Zephyr. Okay, and it didn't have like a real tall shifter or anything funny like that? Her shifter? No no, 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 like a real, really tall, like it, like stuck up real high or anything like that. Uh, it came up, yeah, it came up quite a ways. Not probably as much as the original. Okay. It came up pretty high, yeah. Oh, okay. It didn't have. It was not low at all. It okay. was high. And it didn't have any funny bends or anything in it, like. Not that I recall, Matt. I think there was a curve to it. You know, okay. Not no. Okay, then that's yeah. That sounds that sounds like a like a Ford transmission that someone put uh, Zephyr gears in, which is a common thing I've found over the years. That's, I think that's the answer. Yeah. Okay, okay. That that see that helps me because that helps me build the car correctly. I I have some flatheads that are already like hopped up flatheads that are basically perfect for this car. I just I wanted to ask you some of those questions so I can make sure I put okay. the yeah. put the right things back if in. If you have any more questions, you can give me a call, man. Okay, I really appreciate it. I'll, and now that I have your email as I work on it, I'll send you some photos. Um, yeah, I'd like to see it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if your if your nephew wants to come down and take photos, he's welcome. You can you can pass my phone number on if you'd like. Um, and, oh, okay. And then he can call me and just arrange a time to come by. And, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, and uh, as you're working on it, might be interesting. It'd be interesting to see it. You know. Yeah, definitely. It meant a lot. It meant a lot to me. And you know, it was a kind of a celebrity car in a neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. It was. It was a good car. I never lost a race. Wow. You know, I, as I mentioned, those three. I, maybe I won by default, but still, three out of three is not too bad. <laughs> That's so funny. You, it was so funny, man. I just couldn't believe it. It's, you know, the poking horn is blown tea bucket, mm. model T roadster, and blew you, his axle, and then there's Chuck Turner, blew his transmission, then this Ford guy from the east side, his <laughs> hood came up, and oh, it just messed up the whole <laughs> cowl and the windshield. Oh. I felt bad about it. <laughs> and that was on Woodward. kind of funny, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Was that, where, where, where were you racing there, Woodward Ave, or what's the? On Woodward Avenue, U.S., with the first paved street in, in the United States. Wow. And Woodward Avenue starting out at, each was about a mile, because they started out at Square Lake, which is one mile, and then Long Lake is a mile away from there. It was the second race. Third one was, uh, I think it was Lone Pine. Okay. Each one had a traffic light. Wow. Everybody wanted to race, but. I don't think they did. <laughs> <laughs> that. That's, funny. that's hilarious. That that's so amazing. Yeah, it is. Wow. It is, yeah. Well, thank you so very much. I really appreciate your time. This. The, the, uh, okay. Yeah. If you have any other questions, let me know. Right. Um, yeah. I re like I said, I really appreciate this car. It means probably just as much to me as it did to you. I I I I, uh, I hunt these cars, and this is this is the pinnacle for us. You know, a thirty-two Roadster with. Oh, you know, it's an old yeah. hot rod. It, it it's as good as it gets. So I'm um, I'm so oh, excited. Yeah. Good, so. good for you. Good for you, man. You're Thank doing a good job. You. Thank you so much. So I appreciate your time, and, and and we'll keep in touch for sure. Thank you, Jack. Okay, man. All right, thanks. Talk to you later. Bye. All right, so that was an amazing phone call with Jack. I'm really thankful that he was able to give me a call and give me all that information about the car. Uh, that just made my month, year, whatever, to get all that information because without this information on these old, uh, these old hot rods and old cars, that really you're just left trying to interpret what you think might have happened and, and some of the stuff was 
you know, may not be correct. So a couple of the big takeaways and stuff that I needed to kind of do research on. So Jack was saying that he bought it at a used car lot in the LA area. So um, a lot of times when I'm trying to research stuff, I go to a great resource if you guys uh, haven't gone to it, but Custom Rama with a K uh, is a great resource on the internet that basically archives all kinds of photos, information. It's like a hot rod and custom encyclopedia. So when I was doing some research, Jack said that he bought the car at a used car lot or consignment shop uh, type lot in the LA area. I started kind of doing some Googling and I found out that there, uh, Custom Rama had a little article about D&B auto sales which later became Custom City Auto Sales, that actually specialized in buying and selling uh, basically like secondhand hot rods and customs. And there's a lot of neat old photos of like some pretty famous customs and hot rods that were for sale on that lot. So I'm wondering if maybe that was the lot that he had bought it at. It became Custom City in like the early 50s, let's say 51, 52. So probably when he bought it was in that time period and not the DMB. But I want to do some research. Maybe there's some other photos and you can see this car in the background for sale. It's hard to say. Now, the other thing that is interesting that Jack was saying that I don't fully uh, understand or maybe his memory is a little foggy on is he said that it had like a water-cooled intake manifold but only had one carburetor. There was a couple of really rare high-rise dual carb intakes for flatheads that were done in the Dry Lake era, you know, that were made in that World War II era, the 40s era, um, that were like the Jack Henry, and I think there was an Eddie Myers that were like water-cooled uh, high-rise intakes, but they had two carburetors. So maybe Jack's memory is a little foggy on that, not sure. But what we do know is that he basically had George build him a full house flathead that he thinks had three carburetors, maybe had four, it's hard to say. We're trying to get uh, George on the phone so we can maybe uh, jog his memory of what he did to that engine, maybe reconfirm what the engine that was and trans that was in it. But uh, I passed up on a four carburetor, full house flathead that was sitting at Brian's house uh, or Brian's dad's uh, old shop in North Carolina that I didn't buy it because I was like saying, I don't know what I'm gonna put it in. So now I kind of have something to put it in because Jack confirmed that it had a flathead when he was running it around Detroit in 54. It had a full house flathead in it. That engine is perfect. And really Jack said that he didn't take any other photos of the car. So unfortunately, we don't have anything under the hood of when Jack actually owned the car. So I'm gonna do some interpretation for now and use that engine. So I gotta go get that engine from Brian eventually, but it's cool to know that I have a power plant. He said it had a, a trans with Ze Zephyr gears is probably what it had. I have some 39 transmissions laying around. We can get some Zephyr gears. That's not too hard to acquire, but I'm kind of surprised that the car didn't have a LaSalle in it because of all the LaSalle transmissions in the back. But I wanna to talk to George because Maybe he will remember that it had a LaSalle in it, not sure. Um, other thing that was really surprising is that Jack doesn't remember the Tonic cover. Uh, you know, like, I, like we showed you guys, the Tonic cover is definitely for this car. The snaps line up and everything. So we don't know if Ron maybe found the, the Tonic cover like under the seat or in the trunk and Jack never noticed it. It's hard to say, but it's definitely for this car. It was with the car. Uh, his memory just might be a little foggy. Now the other thing that's kind of interesting, I didn't notice it in the, original, the photo that he sent me before we had talked. He said the car had a Carson top on it. So if you look really close in the photos, you can see a bright white Carson top, not a folding top that's actually on it. Profile of the roof is kind of similar, but not exactly I think as low as the convertible roof that's on here. So more than likely this car came with a convertible top that was chopped, a Carson top, and also a Tonic cover, which is really crazy. So this car could change the look with those three things from a show car to a street car, you know, to a race car, just by doing those couple of things, which is really neat. So it's good to know that, you know, all these parts that go with it. I think I'm gonna try and do the convertible top thing. The Carson top's really cool, but I think it's easier to kind of do the convertible top for now, but we have a photo to kind of mimic that as well when we decide to do it. The other great thing is Jack kind of confirmed it had the hand pump, the little uh, gas cap in the back that we were showing with the pressurized setup, that was what was on it and that's what he used. I know that it's now on the left side of the car, so when we try and match up some holes, that's where the hand pump's gonna go. Um, and he mentioned there's some like switcher you know, a, a valve that was underneath of the dash for, for shutting that off. So uh, he gave us a ton of information that is really helpful. So that's gonna help me with gathering some of the parts and also researching some of the history. So again, I, I've said it in a couple other videos, if anybody 
remember seeing this car, those clamshell louvers are definitely a giveaway, or that rear pan, you know, in an old photo or in the background, definitely hit us up, send us an email, irontrapgarage at gmail.com. I'd love to learn some more about the car, or even if it's a, even if it's a cold case type thing that we, you know, that we, that we look into and it doesn't go anywhere, uh, it's still good because if we can find some more of the history, I'd love to find some photos of this car like on the dry lakes or, or something in the Southern California area from that time frame. Uh, but it's really crazy to think that this car went from, in, in a matter of uh, 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 quite a long period of time, it went from LA to Detroit all the way over to the East Coast. So this car has traveled all the way across the country and is now on the opposite coast, but uh, we're gonna try and give it the love and get this thing uh, looking good again. So that's all we have on this little update on it. It's just a little neat little history thing. You guys seem to enjoy these and I am obviously am really geeky about this stuff. So it's super, super fun for me. So thank you guys for watching, appreciate it. Catch you later.